Welcome back to Medical Coding Section Review. Today I'm going over the genitourinary system as well as the male genitalia system. It's a small section in CPT, so we're not going to have a lot of things to go over, but I do want to go over some of the different codes, the pertinent things to consider, and then a couple of case examples. If you are new to this series, I am doing a whole playlist. Make sure you check out the main channel of Contempo Coding, and you can watch the whole playlist of all of the different medical coding reviews that I am doing. Now this is a review. It is not an introduction course to this particular section of medical coding. It's for a refresher or to go over a couple of concepts after you've studied or you're preparing for a certified coder examination. Hey everyone, I'm Victoria. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, and content creator. And on my channel, I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in a medical coding career. Today, we are going over the genitourinary system and the male genitalia system. This would follow along with chapter 13 of the CPC curriculum if you're following along as a medical coding student. So with this section of CPT, it starts with the kidneys into the bladder, urethra, et cetera. So we start with the kidney and then we have our incisions, excisions, and transplant codes, which I'll talk a little bit about transplant codes because those can get a little bit tricky. Introduction, and then we have under the introduction, renal pelvis catheter procedures, internal dwelling, externally accessible, and other introductions. So things like if you're doing an injection, a change or a removal. We have procedures, repair, laparoscopy, endoscopy, and then other procedures. Now we're getting into the ureter section. Now this might be one where you're seeing incisions and biopsies. So biopsies and incisions are all in that code range, 50600 through 50630. Excisions of the ureter, introductions, other introductions, procedures, repair, laparoscopy, endoscopy, and then we're getting into our bladder section. So incisions in the bladder, removal of things from the bladder. Removal codes include the aspiration codes for aspiration of the bladder, excision, and then we have introduction. Excisions would include like your cysts or if you are having part of the bladder removed. And then introduction, a lot of those are injection codes. Then we have codes for urodynamics, repair, laparoscopic procedures of the bladder, endoscopies, uh, cystoscopies, urethroscopies, cystourethroscopies, transurethral surgery, urethra and bladder surgery, ureter and pelvis, and then vesicle, neck, and prostate. Then we get into the urethra, incision, excision, repair, manipulation, and then other procedures. The other procedures include things like destruction of transurethral prostate tissue. And then this is the male genital section. So fairly similar structure here that we're kind of getting used to. We have with the penis are incisions, destruction. So if they have to destroy maybe a genital wart, excision, introduction, repair, and manipulation. Then we have our testes, excision, exploration, repair, laparoscopy, epididymis, incision, excision, exploration, repair. Same thing with our tunica vaginalis, scrotum, vas deferens, spermatic cord, we get into our excision and then our laparoscopic procedures. There's actually only two laparoscopic procedures there. One is for a ligation, the other is the unlisted code. Then we have incision and excision of the seminal vesicles, and then the codes for the prostate, incision, excision, laparoscopy, other procedures, and then we also have codes for reproductive system procedures and intersex surgery. Some of the pertinent ICD-10 CM sections for urinary, we have to think first about our cancer codes, our C codes, if you see the word C, you're thinking cancer, because those are our neoplasms, our cancerous neoplasm codes. So codes C64 through C68 are malignant neoplasms of the urinary tract. And then we have a lot of codes from chapter 14, both in our genital urinary and male genitalia sections. Glomerular diseases, renal tubulo interstitial diseases, acute kidney failure and chronic kidney disease. And there's a lot of guidelines surrounding kidney failure and when its relationship to hypertension. Those are ones you want to get familiar with. Uh, those are actually in the codes for the cardiovascular section in ICD-10-CM, make sure you are familiar with those associated relationships with hypertension and chronic kidney disease and hypertension and heart disease in ICD-10-CM. And again, that's in your chapter nine guidelines for cardiovascular. The other thing to think about with kidneys is when you're talking about a patient who has acute kidney failure and chronic kidney failure, one of the sequencing guidelines we have in ICD-10-CM is acute conditions get coded before a chronic condition in ICD-10-CM. So if they have acute 
and chronic kidney failure, acute get co gets coded first. The good way to think about this is A, B, C. Remember your A, B, Cs, acute before chronic, acute before chronic, A, B, C, get it? So that's how you can remember your sequencing guidelines for those. Uh, urolithiasis, other disorders of the kidney and ureter system. Then we have other disorders of the urinary system and then intraoperative and postoperative complications and disorders of the genital urinary system not elsewhere classified. In our male genitalia section, we have our cancers of the male genital organs, codes C60 through C63, and then our genital urinary system, codes N40 through N53, are where we have our diseases of the male genital organs. So the functions of the urinary system include filtering the blood, removing waste through urine, balancing the body's fluids and electrolytes, releasing hormones to control blood pressure and red blood cell production, and it assists with controlling calcium and phosphorus. Now, when we're talking about our male genital reproductive system, that includes producing and transporting sperm, ejaculating sperm into the female reproductive tract, and producing and secreting male hormones. So most of the male reproductive system is located outside of the body. Now, as far as top concepts, kidney transplant. When you're coding for kidney transplant, we code not just the transplant itself, but what's referred to as the backbench work. So that's the surgeon basically taking the donor kidney and cleaning it up and preparing it for transplant into the recipient site. And another thing to consider when it comes to coding for renal transplants, and I did code for renal transplants for a good period of time, uh, is that this is one of those exceptions to the global period is if a patient is receiving post-operative immunosuppressive therapy management following a kidney transplant that is not included in that global surgical package so typically when you have a surgery like a major surgery all of those follow-up visits for 90 days are included well that's not always the case in the event of a patient who had a kidney transplant because certain visits such as immunosuppressive therapy management are outlined to not be included in the global surgical package. So if they're in a global period for a kidney transplant and the provider documents in their note that it is for immunosuppressive therapy management following their transplant, it can be billed out as the appropriate evaluation and management code with modifier 24 to designate that it is not related to that original surgery. Another thing to consider is with urodynamics. If we are only doing the professional component only, so just reading it, then you add modifier 26 for professional component only. And if you're doing multiple procedures, keep an eye out for those modifier 51s, because if you're doing multiple procedures in the same session, you may have to look for that modifier 51 for those multiple procedures. Now let's get into a couple of our case studies. This one is a 62 year old gentleman presented to the outpatient department with complaints of pain on the left lumbar region associated with foul smelling discharge for the past three months. A sinogram was performed, which revealed a nephrocutaneous fistula. Based on the findings and studies, the patient was planned for a closure of the fistula. The provider excised the upper surface of the openings and tied the healthy tissue together with sutures. What CPT code should be utilized? So let's look at what we're doing here. 62-year-old gentleman, left lumbar region, okay, left lumbar, and associated with foul smelling discharge for the past three months, sinogram was performed. What CPT code should be utilized of these four selections? And it looks like it was a patient who had a nephrocutaneous fistula, and it was tied together for, with sutures, so they sutured it together and it was done for a closure, closure of the fistula. They did closure of the fistula, tied it together with sutures. That seems consistent with closing the fistula. All right, let me get out my CPT book and let's see where we're gonna start here. We have a 50543, 50520, 50544, and 50500. So nephrocutaneous, nephro means the kidney, and they did a repair of that because they're suturing it back together, they're closing it. So what we should do is go to the urinary section. If we go to kidney, and we have a section here that says repair, I believe, right? Okay, so there it is. So we can follow that through, it's on page 400. Now, if you were looking this up in the alphabetic index, I would start with maybe repair, or you could maybe try fistula, see if anything's there under the fistula section. 
but I want to do this one where I just check under my repair codes. So here we are in our repair codes. So we have pyeloplasty, complicated, nephrorhaphy, suture of a kidney wound. Now this wasn't closure of a nephrocutaneous ooh, or pylocutaneous fistula. So here we are, 50520, closure of a nephrocutaneous fistula. And that's what this was, a nephrocutaneous fistula. And that is right on our options, right? That's option B. So good job, we're at option B. 50520, which is our code for the closure of the nephrocutaneous fistula. Now we're gonna get into an ICD-10CM code. Patient is diagnosed with right renal calculi and bladder calculus. What ICD-10CM codes are supported? By the way, if you're enjoying this content, I would highly encourage you to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get alerts when I post new episodes just like this, super helpful information that you don't want to miss. So the first thing I'm noticing, and tell me if you guys notice this too, R3 1.9 is here, R3 1.9 is here. So we might be dealing with some sequencing situations here, like does this come before or after this code? And then this one has N20.0, N21.0, okay. N21.9 is here and here. So let's take a look. Right renal calculi and bladder calculus. What ICD-10-CM codes are supported? So this one has kind of a variety. So I don't know that I wanna look up the codes themselves, maybe we could start with N20.0 and see where that is. Cause we're all, we're a little bit over all over the place right here. So let's, let's try and do this one where we just start in our alphabetic index. So first thing to note, calculi says C calculus. So either way we're looking under calculus and we have calculus of the bladder and the right renal. So right renal and bladder calculus. Let's start, let's see where it says under bladder and see if maybe there's a combination of something where it tells you to use another code bladder so it says bladder is n21.0 so the only one that has n21.0 is actually our option a do you see that there option a is the only one here that has n21.0 let's look at the the renal so renal meaning kidneys because if we look actually under renal it'll just tell us to look at kidney so kidney looks like it's n20.0 which is also the only one that's in option A. So it looks like option A, <laughs> unless R3 1.9 would have something that's, I don't know, R3 1.9. I'm liking option A. I just wanna check what this R3 1.9 is. So R3 1.9 is hematuria, so it's definitely not included in B and D. And we know it's N20.0 and N21.0. So if we would just verify those in our tabular list, it will tell us that those are the correct codes. What's that N20.9? I just wanna look that up too. So N20.9 says urinary calculus unspecified, and this was specified. We have right renal and we have bladder. It wasn't urinary unspecified calculus. So definitely this one is our option A, our N20.0 and our N21.0. Last one, 36 year old male has a vasectomy reversal bilaterally using the operating microscope. Select the correct CPT code. So this one, we're looking at a vasectomy reversal bilateral and the operating room microscope. Now, when I look at this, I can see right away, there's, there's some codes that they tell you to bill separately for the operating room microscope. And that's actually this code right here, 69990. So I know that one off the top of my head, that's the operating room microscope code. So depending on the code description, if it says to bill out separately for that, those codes would be correct. If it says it's included in that code for the vasectomy reversal, then we don't bill an additional code for it. So that might be one thing we're differentiating here. And the other thing that to kind of draw to your attention is this code is the same, 55440, and this one's 55440, but with a 50 modifier and 69990. And then this code here, 55250, is the same as this one, but this one has the 50 modifier and the operating room, code, operating room microscope code. So we're really only looking at two different codes here and how they're utilized. So if we look at this first code here, 
55250, it says vasectomy, unilateral or bilateral, separate procedure, including post-operative semen examination. Now, this doesn't look like the right code, but I can eliminate this actually right away because it says or bilateral. And when it says bilateral in there, that means we don't add the modifier 50 because it's in the code description. It's inherently bilateral. So 55250 with the 50 modifier is already out of uh, the picture. Um, and we know it's not the right code either because this is for a vasectomy, not for the reversal. So that's out. And it's gotta be 55440, but how we utilize it with the 50 modifier and the operating room microscope, that's gonna be different. So here's our 55400 vasovasotomy, vasovasoraphy, and it says for bilateral procedure, report 55400 with modifier 50, and it says, for operating room microscope, we're supposed to use that code. So that means automatically B is out because we're supposed to also use the operating room microscope code when it's done and also the modifier 50. Now, if you were to look this up in the alphabetic index, you would start with vasectomy and then reversal. And this is the code it's gonna take you to, the 55400. And those instructions tell us to use the modifier 50 and the operating room microscope code along with it. In the next section, we're actually gonna go over the female genitalia as well as some of those pregnancy codes for review. There's a lot of coding guidelines around pregnancy coding. Don't forget, if you have questions, I go live just about every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, just keep on coding on.